Congratulations to both of you! Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves! But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pentacone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown. Extraordinary. Oh, my God. 
much time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. In that case, let's make our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival before entering the Grand Theater. I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, Equality non-existent. Common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Panacone would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise for all? Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, 
Let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action, the only path to take. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charming Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Huh. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. Hmm. Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead? I will do as you command. Robin, could I trust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth. Just oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palm. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Always heeding their admonishments. Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. 
Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god? Coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past with the Eon as my witness? If I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were kin, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All do such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the Great One, Shibei? Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very sim In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. Being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Pinakuni is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipei. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through Harmony, we obtain Order. Unbelievable. 
To think that there would be remnants of the Order on Panacone. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone, and have been widely observed. Smart kid. You're just as sharp as the other one. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of- You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. So you've decided to res- If Miss Himiko is interested, let- I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth. So, come with me, Ever. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in- Same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thought. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I... That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers. And it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the... We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, its destiny was determined by our... Now, I pass the power of choice to stick to the original plan. Or build a cage for I eagerly await your answer.
Interesting. From what I've observed, there are at least three, even if they shy as for the choice you made. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all co He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except that, to most people, the price he paid. <sighs> I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they... He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. Wondering whether a different choice could have led to a better outcome. Sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a mere pipe dream. Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. They couldn't bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. And the story this time is my own. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. 
What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue, do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination.